Yeah, it's exactly it. I mean, again, I, I can't, I can't, I can't spec. I mean, I can speculate. I obviously can't predict with accuracy, but I, I would, I would agree with you, Lori. My, you know, I can't take credit for saying this. I don't know who said it, but it's now becoming the sort of common, it's almost becoming axiomatic at this point. People are saying, uh, we're not sure if we're going to be replaced by agent, by AI, but we may likely be replaced by people who know how to use AI. We've been hearing variations of that. What I would say I believe for sure is going to happen, because in my field around software engineers, IT engineers, is I believe that we're going to start to see a new, there's a need for a new type of engineer. And unfortunately, by the way, the consequence here is people are, are eliminating entry-level jobs. Once you start to do that, you're basically cutting off a critical part of the central nervous system of our economy in terms of developing new talent. And so what's happening now is because people, there's a notion that, well, a lot of those perfunctory tasks that entry level does can now be agentified. I just made that word up, sorry, by the way, but agents could do that, some of those things. So then I believe, <clears throat> and so what's happening now is that before when you hired, let's say a programmer, Lori, you needed someone to actually go build your website or to go build an app or to connect to the database and then to show the front end and make sure well, there's an engineer and they have different roles. Uh, a lot of that code could be written by AI now. And so the question is, well, what is, what's the role of this person as what I call a systems engineer? Now they have to understand the entire stack. When you're a Java developer or an HTML developer, you don't have to worry about what chip your HTML code was compiling against and running on. You have to think about those things. With AI, which is a different kind of software paradigm altogether, is unlike traditional software that could run in any chip, if you will, if you, AI is very peculiar and very particular to every single piece of hardware it's running on. The analogy I like to give is like, imagine you have like a, a restaurant. You could take any recipe and cook that meal on any piece of hardware, any stove, any skillet, any frying pan, any, anything. Imagine now with AI, every recipe requires a different stove, different oven, different skillet, different pan, different, literally that's what's happening. So it's very, so it's a whole new computing paradigm. And so now if you're an engineer, you have to understand the underlying hardware, the chip itself, you got to understand the server it's running on. So now you have to understand the infrastructure. Then you have to understand how to program that, that, that semiconductor. Then you have to understand the data layer. And now you have to think about the agentic layer. And then you have to think about the sort of business rules and ethical considerations and policy compliance factors. You never had to do that before as an engineer. And this is happening overnight. So now I've got to come from becoming like an HTML developer to now becoming a systems engineer and think about how to work alongside these agents. So you're going to have smaller teams. You're not going to have a 800 person engineering team or a 30 person engineering team. What they would have had before budget for 30 people, maybe more like 17 people. All of them are systems or super engineers. And they basically have about 30 agents working along with those 17 engineers. That's so the reskilling, everything's going to change. You got to reskill of those engineers they keep into becoming these systems engineers. Thank you.